Hi. Is that going? Yeah. I'm in Woodhaven, uh, and um, this is actually cheaper than calling you. So, uh, because I can just uh, put it on your Facebook. I'm in a Colombian uh, cafe. It's all Colombian and Ecuador here, but in Woodhaven. I just had cow feet. Caldo de Paca. And two lovely women, young women. Uh, one was from El Salvador, the other was from Colombia. And I uh, was very interested in talking to them. They likewise. They, uh, I, I met uh, Leia Yuan. This uh, article I printed from the American Journal of Psychoanalysis. The question of survival, the death of desire, and the weight of life. This article aims to document the psychic injury of torture, psychic deadness, erasure of subject refusal of speech, making, on and on and on. Um, it's, it's rough since things are not going away if my torturers want it to be. And I'm trying to do my best to call embassies and notify them of this regardless of what they can provide. They are using applications of these uh, emerging weapon systems to make me very, very tired. I'm very tired. I slept on the train all morning until noon when I got off, well, until, yeah, noon when I got off and did my laundry. I, I just, I'm so tired all the time. This synthetic lethargy comes over me. I, um, but I'm glad because I can call these embassies. It's, it's dire. It's very dire. I have a group of people who go around and tell they are authorized to, and they somehow have the power, and the people who get demands put on them seem utterly fine with what they're doing, whether it's making friends for me for deceptive, nefarious criminal purposes, or just the countless a dozen to two to three to four dozen strangers a day, depending on what they're doing that day, to interfere with my uh, time on subway and whatnot. So I've got to get the hell out because it's, it's pretty dire. Unlike uh, the person in this uh, essay, the survival, the question of survival, unlike him, I, I don't know as if I can go to a place with a ready-made solution. So people come here, they get uh, refugee status. If they can work, they work. Uh, if they can't, no, some, some are a little debilitated. I can work. The problem is getting to the place. And I, the longer I stay here, I, I, I am exacerbated by so many different things. And I, I, it's a struggle every day, believe it or not. And I'm used to it. I'm wondering what it, what it would be like to sit on a subway and when I walk into that subway car, or I'm on the platform, I know that there, there, there will be no possibility of a myriad of things that are done to me in those situations, which are all intrusive, all cruel, all to make me, make me know how this is happening. I'm surrounded sometimes. The whole subway car. On and on and on and on, and that's what the PTSD does. It just makes you go on and on and on and on. But I'm very tired. One reason for the 
applications of a lethargy, so I don't make the, the, the videos that I do have been making. And I, I have to call them short because I'm, I'm, my eyelids are very heavy right now. They weren't heavy when I was when the camera was away and I was talking to the lovely El Salvador and woman and uh, woman from uh, Colombia in the Ecuadorian restaurant I was in eating uh, healthy. It was pretty horrible. So I'm, basically I have to remember that this is for you and it's not one of my videos, so it's horrible, it really is. I, I don't know what to do. I just did my laundry and woman. This is I did exactly what the woman did to me in the laundromat for she kept going by and doing <coughs> louder. Well when I went out on the street, I did not have a zap of lethargy over me. And um, I did exactly at the same volume level that she did on the street. And a, a woman walking with glasses, maybe 50 to 60, she turned around to look at me. This goes on in the library incessantly for hours sometimes. And when I do it in public, people look at me. And when I complain, if I do, the very, very, very rare times I do in the library. Don't oh, hey, you think we're doing something to you? Don't be doing anything to you, man. And then even the guard will say, we have a problem. Hey, this is just... It's regular, normal people have problems with their throats sometimes. Talk about absurdity. I'd like to do a play on this. And it wouldn't be an absurdist, but it would be realist. But it's just an absurdity. And it's all I mean. I, I'm surrounded. I am in a room, a huge room, on the fourth floor of Midtown Library. And there are 30 to 50 people, and they are all under lock and key. Don't say a word. You don't. Nothing's abnormal. And they'll look at me, and they'll all look at me with the same glare. Like, is he gonna, we're waiting for him to say, and then we'll, we're supposed to, like, shake our heads or respond. Or, what are you talking about? But they're, they look at me when I stand up. And these, these really forceful, these guys, and, like, <coughs> and it's all cued based on my keystrokes and opening a page, <coughs> finishing a sentence. <coughs> you know, sick. They do the same applications to my body if there's none of that around. Uh, okay, I gotta, I am tired. I'm gonna drink a coffee. Ciao. U.S. Ooh, us food. This, this guy, what's the you woman? Know, well, where is she going? Where is she going? Oh. This woman, you'd think, is, is it's, a, it's not a stroller, though. It's, it's just clothing. See? Just clothing. No baby.